Mohisha begin. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everybody. Today, we are here to celebrate World Conservation Day. World Conservation Day is celebrated internationally on 28th July to increase awareness about the best practices to protect our natural resources. The earth is supplied a limited amount of properties that we all rely upon each day, like water, air, and soil. This day recognizes that a healthy environment is the foundation for a stable and productive society and to ensure the well-being of present and future generations. It is important to raise awareness among people all over the world to understand the importance of saving resources, recycle it, preserve it, and also understand the consequences of damaging it. The natural world is facing an increasing threat from unsustainable practices, and the challenge is how to preserve and conserve nature to achieve sustainable development. We have two guest experts from the field of biodiversity and nature conservation. I request Arya to introduce them. Thank you, Moisha. Dr. M. Shah Hussain, a Master of Science and Doctor of Philosophy in Wildlife Sciences from AMU Aligarh, has completed numerous long as well as short term research projects related to biodiversity and its conservation. His entire career has been field oriented, and his work experience includes Joint Forest Management Program, IIFM Bhopal, Man and Biosphere Research Program of Ministry of Environment and Forest to assess the threats to biodiversity of the mid-altitude oak forest of Kumao Himalayas, ecosystem monitoring of the Keoladio National Park Bharatpur, and finally, strategy and action plan for the Gangetic Plains ecoregion. Currently, he's working as an ecologist scientist D-level since 2004 and senior scientist in charge at the Aravli Biodiversity Park Delhi under the Biodiversity Park Program of Center for Environmental Management of Degraded Ecological Systems, School of Environmental Studies, and University of Delhi. The development of Aravli Biodiversity Park is an ecological restoration of an area over 692 acres on mining land and aims to bring back the biological diversity of Delhi Aravlis lost due to intensive mining and other developmental activities. We welcome you, sir. Now, I'd like to invite Kriti to introduce our second guest for the day, Dr. Mr. Ramesh Pandey. Kriti, uh, Kriti, are you there? Sorry, ma'am, I was mute. Uh, please start. Mr. Ramesh Kumar Pandey, Director of National Zoological Park, and mm -hmm. IFS 1999 batch is a gold medalist in honors diploma, Natural Resource Management from Indira Gandhi National Forest Academy, Dehradun. He has many other certificates and diplomas to his credit, like Certificate Course on, sus uh, on Sustainable Forestry from Yale University, Connecticut, USA, Certificate Course on Sustainable Energy Solutions from UNIDO, ICPE, Slovenia, Executive Development Program from Center for Leadership Development, Western, Ma Western Management Development Center, I, uh, Aurora, Denver, USA, to name a few. Awards and Recognition, Asia Environmental Enforcement Award by United Nations Environmental Program at Bangkok for works combating organized wildlife crime, G5 Governance Award for excellent contribution in biodiversity conservation at New Delhi, Clark R. Bevin Award for wildlife law enforcement to Wildlife Crime Control Bureau, 
WWF PETA uh, Tiger Conservation Award for Outstanding Contribution in Tiger and Wildlife Conservation, State Award for Outstanding Performance in Operations Green, Forest Protection and Wildlife Conservation, the, uh, and the professional experience includes 24 years of work experience in areas ranging from ecology to economics, Eight years of experience as Joint Development Commissioner in Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. 15 years of experience as Deputy Director, World Bank IWOP Project and includes almost six years of work experience in Tiger Reserve. Sir is currently the Director of National Zoological Park in New Delhi. A very warm welcome, Sir. Thank you, Kriti. Now, I would request Principal Ma'am to address the gathering. A very good evening to all. And uh, uh, Dr. Shah and uh, Mr. Hussein, I extend a special welcome to all, to both of you, because your presence means a lot to us here. You're the kind of experience you've had. I'm sure we would be much enricher after the webinar today. Thank you so much once again, and a warm welcome to you. A warm welcome to all the teachers also who have made this event this evening possible. And of course, I can't forget the children of the Eco Club and the Birla Green Society because they have also worked very hard. Thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Now, today when we assemble here to talk about the World Conservation Day, I think it's very important for us to introspect that how can we work to make the planet, the planet Earth, a better place to live? Because if each one of us starts thinking in that direction, I'm sure the results would be, uh, would be wonderful. And uh, you all must have seen how the environment, how the air quality became better during this uh, lockdown period you've all witnessed that what kind of, um, I would say, the poor air or the garbage we are creating and making our own lives miserable. So I think it's important that today we introspect each one of us in our own little way. Children, uh, mainly for you, uh, by now you must have realized that no, ma no matter what, a good health is something that is most important because you've witnessed, you're part of the history where you have witnessed that everything was shut down to ensure that we stay healthy. And uh, you should conclude uh, with this whole act all over the world. Very, very primary to us and we must look after ourselves. I say ourselves, that's very important. We have to take charge of ourselves, of our own selves. And it's not a big deal to stay healthy, to be healthy. It's not a big deal. First of all, follow a routine and do exercises. Of course, those things are there. But very important are, things are that we must use the natural resources. Uh, we should not bank upon artificial things which we eat, which we consume wear cotton, eat well, and eat organic stuff and things like that. The second thing is, you know, maintain a personal hygiene and maintain a good hygiene around us. So that is also very important that uh, we stay, uh, we keep cl ourselves clean and we keep the surroundings clean. And at the end of it, you know, uh, we should all make sincere efforts to protect the nature. I mean, don't shy, don't hesitate in telling somebody who is uh, spoiling the nature, uh, get into a habit of telling the person that this, is, this should not be done. It's a high time that we muster that courage and we tell others that don't do this. It will be hurting initially, but then we all have to, you know, get used to of this because we cannot spoil the nature. Now we have two great, uh, um, great, I would say, scientists with us today and who are working day and night to protect the environment. So I think 
I should hand over to them rather than I continue speaking on these issues. Thank you so much once again, Dr. Shah and Dr. Mr. Pandey. Thank you, ma'am. Now I would request Dr. Shah to brief us about biodiversity and its challenges. Hello. 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 Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. yes, sir. You are audible. You are audible, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, my screen is visible or not? Hello. Visible. Can you see my presentation? Yes, sir. We can see your presentation. Okay. Okay. Is it okay? Hello. Hello. Oh, we can. Are you hearing me? Yes, we can, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a very important occasion that we are discussing about the uh, importance of uh, nature conservation and uh, its relation with health. During this pandemic, what we have witnessed that people have realized about the role of biological diversity. So we see uh, all living forms around us and we, uh, there is a very famous quote by Wilson, Professor Wilson, that we need them to survive, but they don't need us. So uh, a layman will ask you what is biological diversity and what is the importance of that biological diversity is. So it's a uh, variety of life forms on earth. 
and it is in thousands uh, in numbers. That is maybe 1.5 crore species have been identified, but this number leaves out a very large number of organisms, particularly those that are microscopic or hard to study in the places such as the deep oceans. In recent times, since we accelerated the developmental activities and hundreds of species have gone extinct and the human activities, uh, they have uh, accelerated the rate of extinction to the manifold. So uh, how many species uh, are there on earth? And how much we have, we could have identified till now. So it is only 10%, I would say. It is only 10% that we could identify out of, you know, 10% uh, the species. And yes, due to all means anthropogenic or atmospheric other activities, a uh, lot more extinctions have taken place. And before that, since the age of Earth till now, we have witnessed five extinctions, uh, this 4.6 billion of years of Earth. And now it is, we are the passing through the sixth extinction rate. So it is a question that the sixth extinction uh, event Will human being survive or not? That is a question. So, uh, if we see uh, example, that how many varieties that we have in terms of biological diversity, which nature encompasses. And if you see one example, that a beetle. So till now, three lakh fifty thousand beetle species have been identified. So the lower animals, the lower uh, organisms, they are more in numbers which we are not giving more importance to them. Uh, the microflora, the microfauna, they are too many, but certainly it is all always overlooked. Then uh, what nature gives you? Why uh, we are concerned with, why we are concerned with uh, to conserve nature, to conserve biological diversity, because we need services and these services are, we call it ecosystem services. So somebody will ask, what is ecosystem? So it is all collection of the species, the physical environment in which these species live, their interactions with their other and with their shared environment. Some examples are tropical rainforests, coral reefs and freshwater marshes. And the earth ecosystem provide goods and services that sustain all life on the planet including human life. So tragically, the human onfit takes uh, all these services delivered free of charges, but they always take in it for granted. Uh, you may ask, you know, that if you lose uh, biological diversity, it is a big term, but if you lose a single species, so this woman is managing the pollination. Uh, the woman is pollinating apple tree by hand because bees in this region have gone extinct. So probably from an excessive use of pesticides, it takes uh, people to pollinate 100 trees. But this job can be done by two beehives. So a single species extinction, it gives you that you have to manage your own planet, but which you cannot. Then the human activities and threats to biodiversity. The main factors is habitat destruction, which may be on land, in a stream, rivers, lakes, and the oceans. And human activities are deforestation, the damming and the dredging of streams, rivers, lakes, training, degradation of wetland, estuaries, mangroves, all are responsible for degradation. And sometimes, means mostly it is overharvesting of plants and animals, introduction of non-native species, then we release pollutants, that results in acid, drills, acid rains, heavy metals, herbicides, pesticides, and plastics. And then warheads also, and the conflict that can result in habitat destruction, overhunting, and pollution and climate change. So all these are all human activities which are threats to biological diversity. So all changes to the environment, be they from pollution, deforestation, greenhouse gases, emission, or other causes ultimately affect the living world. Once we lose a gene, species, or an ecosystem, it is gone forever. And then another thing uh, is the climate change. Again, they play a great role in biodiversity loss. And it is estimated that climate change alone is anticipated 
to threaten with extinction approximately 25% or more of all species on land by the year 2050, surpassing even habitat loss as the biggest threat to life on Earth. And even the oceans or aquatic uh, life also at great risk from climate change, especially those like coral that live in ecosystem uniquely sensitive to warming and temperatures. So climate change is a threat because species evolve to live within certain temperature ranges and when these are exceeded, a species cannot adapt to new temperatures, its survival is threatened. And uh, yes, if you see the time series uh, photograph, what climate change has done. So glaciers, they are finished now. The uh, average temperature of the Earth, if you see the future 20,000 years back, the entire America, North Europe, and Northern Asia were under two miles sheet of ice was only six degrees Celsius cooler than this. So now it is habited. All these continents are habited now. And this 2050, all species, 25 principally more all species, land extinction will be taking place. Then what do you get from nature in the form of medicine or uh, microbes, what it gives you? It's all means the medicine you get, then many, many of the antibiotics you get from the microfauna or microflora. And then uh, many other species which are uh, useful and overlooked, not studied. Always we are studying the bigger animals, but certainly the smaller groups like moon snails or the corals, all these, they provide certain kind of medicine, certain kind of product which are beneficial to human beings. So uh, I would say, yes, uh, the nature conservation, it at most for human survival at one, uh, at one point of a time, but certainly it is not the human only that is uh, playing a key role uh, on the life on the earth. There are lakhs of species which are interacting together, they are working together, they are giving and their interaction gives the products and that those products are being utilized by many of the species. So it is not the, I would say it is not the only human species that we are certainly, we are dependent upon, we are not interdependent. So we have to see the independence also. Then uh, small, small uh, organisms like this uh, example of uh, uh, a snail, which they, they have a certain kind of peptide, which they uh, use for uh, seizing the prey but certainly this, this uh, uh, peptide can be used uh, by human being to treat many of the diseases or the pain as a use as a painkillers. Then uh, biodiversity in human infection diseases, certainly we are losing habitats. And uh, losing habitat means we are becoming vectors to many diseases directly as compared to the virgin forest or the bigger uh, or the bio-rich bio areas where you have other vectors also and where the human are not becoming directly. So take example of malarial uh, this parasite uh, plasmodium or it is spread by uh, the malarial uh, anopheles, uh, this female. Certainly, uh, if you have hundreds of species around, it is all a diffuse thing. So uh, like deforestation it has done and uh, you increase the number of many of the disease and you become vector out of that and you lost other species. Then uh, I will quote some examples of this mosquito diversity. It has increased, uh, decreased because of, you know, you deforested the area and the dominant one become the vector, uh, the carrier and we become the vector for that. Then many of the snails, they, they adapted to the uh, deforestation and they, they become more carrier and they spread the disease and the some of the species like Nipah virus uh, because we uh, we finish the habitat for the bats and they come out with the contact with pigs uh, in the Malaysia and then uh, we are all uh, infect, got infection with that so this what importance of that you have you need to have nature around you need to have diverse nature around you need to have diverse uh, this vectors or species around then only uh, you can talk about the sustainable 
nature around. Then uh, infectious diseases appear to be emerging and re-emerging at a faster rate. Why? Because they become resistant to and they change themselves. They are, we don't have uh, vectors for them, so certainly it is all emerging, it is all emerging and emerging many diseases emerging worldwide. Then uh, the bushmeat and the HIV and AIDS. It is all well established that the virus is causing HIV and AIDS, which currently infects more than thousands of lakhs and thousands of people around. And it was transmitted to human beings with the Central African, sometimes between 1910 to 1950 from the body fluid of infected chimpanzees. So uh, it means that why we dependent upon why are we dependent upon the bushmeat and all this because the expanding population and the need of uh, the people demand the demand to high level and yes we were not uh, used to eating those uh, bushmeat this thing directly. And certainly the infection and it has entered to us. So these are all uh, things that we have to think in future that how we can reduce all these things. Then a species diversity and dilution effect. As I was discussing that if you have more species, you have more carriers, more vectors and you are not affected. But if you are alone and you finish, so the dominant one will remain and will affect you and that is what happened with the present pandemic also and the past pandemics also and uh, uh, we have to think about that how to conserve nature and efforts are being paid. Then biodiversity and food production. It's very important that few plants, few plant species, they provide almost 90% uh, to 70%, 90% food production in the form of either the cereals or the animal products we are depending upon. But certainly it is not the only these uh, species of animal and plants they are providing to us. There are thousands of species involved in surviving these many plants and animals or microbes. They protect against pests, decompose waste and recycle nutrients, convert atmospheric nitrogen to soil nitrogen compounds, then birds, bats, frog butterflies and other they serve as natural pest control agents in agricultural system. Then the sun, sunbird, butterflies, moths, honeybees, and other you know, species, they pollinate. They pollinate and we get products out of it. So more than 70 of the crop grown in India depends on insects pollinators. Certainly, we have to protect these many. And as agriculture will continue to rely on fewer species and varieties of crops and livestock as a wild relative are increasingly threatened, the need to preserve the genetic diversity of crop species and domestic animals for future generations grows steadily, increasing the importance of seed banks. Then our responsibility, what is, how we can conserve nature. Most people experience the loss of other species and the disruption of ecosystem as vague, happening somewhere else and separate from themselves. The challenge for those of us working to preserve biodiversity is to convince others, policymakers and the public that we human beings are in, intimately connected with biodiversity we share. The small planet is totally dependent on the goods and services they provide and that we have no other choice but to preserve them. We cannot damage without damaging ourselves. We are convinced here there is no better way to do this. No way more concrete, personal and compelling than to demonstrate that our health and lives depend on biodiversity, on the health and the biological richness of the living world. So I will, I will, I will just say a small example that if we, if we lose a unique species, there's a gastric brooding frog of Australian rainforest. It is a very peculiar frog. The female, what it does, it takes the uh, eggs inside its intestine or uh, inside. And there it, uh, it hatches over there. So as we know that there are many acids or enzymes, they decompose or they digest our food. But what kind of enzyme it secretes or it it, it, it has a coating that the baby, it hatches over there and it comes out and then it develops other different stages after coming out. So, but this is, this has gone extinct due to anthropogenic activities and uh, the miraculous and the perhaps 
totally unique compound that evolved in these crops perhaps for millions of years are now gone forever. So you never know that which kind of you know chemical that we could not find out because of going one species and we could not have done any kind of research. So these are all we have to save entire uh, this biological diversity so that it can be beneficial for human being at one point, but it is going to benefit to the entire uh, this nature uh, in general. Then uh, what kind of environment if you are living around, what kind of environment you need, you feel that it is a good area and it is a good city and good kind. So in urban set of what kind of rivers you need, natural forests you need, water bodies you need and the city forest, you, this all gives you soothing effect and gives you uh, a kind of feeling that you are feeling better by getting the all ecosystem services as a clean air, pollution free environment, dust free environment that gives you. Then uh, gardens and parks, pathways to zoological parks and botanical gardens, these are all uh, because mostly the cities are, con the entire world is now urban. So all these are the component that gives you the uh, good uh, life and uh, then reconnect with nature. Celebrate uh, how you can conserve all these, these small, small points that can be uh, I think taken over by urban biodiversity to connect people with the natural heritage of the local ecosystem, interact with nature, and which is our life, interactions foster sensitivity to nature, environmental issues, the nature study, nature walks. These are all activities. Certainly it is going to help and conserve your nature if we, if you, it is a holistic approach that if you do, or uh, we do, or uh, to the local level, to the regional level, to the proper aspect level, then only we can think about that we are contributing something and conserve nature. Then uh, the environmental problems that city faces today are acute. Everywhere it is, you will find that you have some problem with the environmental issues, the dust, the air is not. So unless you, unless the situation is taken seriously, future of the city itself is under question. So Delhi started a uh, concept of developing biodiversity parks as uh, ecosystem conservation approach level. Uh, so that we started developing biodiversity parks. So uh, it is being covered uh, in total area of 2027 uh, acres of land and biodiversity park in Delhi. And we are, it's being covered in seven, seven biodiversity parks. So Delhi has two life supporting systems, the Yamuna and portions of Aravadis. Both ecosystems are at one point of a time were providing ecological services to people at Delhi, but they are all finished now. You see the condition of River Yamna, you see the condition of the portions of our valleys, popularly known as Delhi Ridge. So it's all uh, we are trying just to uh, contribute uh, in terms of nature conservation of Delhi particularly. And if it goes, this model can be extrapolated and it can be contributed uh, to the entire nation in terms of ecological conservation approach or ecosystem conservation approach as a part of eco restoration. So here we are adopting all kinds of models. So we are reviving the natural ecosystem. Then we are inviting people to come to participate. Then we are educating school children also. So this is a model. Certainly it is going to help uh, in terms of, you know, nature conservation as a part of you know, the, this thing and we are witnessing all events in these biodiversity parks. So oh, I would say uh, thanks because uh, time is limited and I was hurriedly uh, going for that and uh, the questions are always welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us. Now I would request Mr. Ramesh Pandey, the director of Delhi Zoo, to brief us about conservation and its best practices. Can you hear me, please? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. 
thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, webinar uh, and uh, i'm really grateful to mrs dat and the principal and faculty of the school that they organized this very important event and uh, invited us to speak on the importance of nature conservation and how uh, in today's context this subject is relevant for all of us uh i would start from the very concept of uh talking of nature conservation usually we say that save nature save forest save wildlife or save biodiversity you might have heard this kind of these kinds of uh, slogans or uh deliberations or or uh, uh people talking in these terms but uh, now it's very very important to appreciate that when we say uh, save tigers or save save nature or save biodiversity uh, actually we are not saving them we are saving ourselves uh, the time has come to appreciate this that saving uh nature or conserving nature doesn't mean uh, we are we are doing something uh, extraordinary or something uh, we are becoming kind on plants or animals or feral creature basically uh, what we what whatever we are doing we must appreciate that we are doing for ourselves nature is too big a system to understand and we are very tiny part of uh, that huge nature uh, there are millions of species uh, both in plants and animals and we tend to forget that uh, we are part of the nature not the nature is part of the homo sapiens uh, congregation so for students and for everyone who is listening this this uh, this this uh, understanding has to be uh, developed and appreciated that we must be polite and um uh, capable of understanding fact that we are the tiny part of the uh, the the huge system what we call uh, nature and uh, uh one more thing which we which we must appreciate that uh, none of the components of uh, nature uh is uh, uh can be created by human beings uh for instance uh if we are losing water which is very important component for the lives of the sapiens and for many other species uh it would be very difficult for us to uh, to to manufacture uh, say sweet water to drink or to do um, our day to day acti activities uh similarly if we are going to lose clean air it, it won't be possible for us to manufacture or uh, to clean airs by using technologies or from machines uh, which can be available for each and every uh, human being on, on on this earth so uh, this has to be uh, this has to be appreciated and understood that uh, why nature is important and what is the context of this subject when we talk of nature conservation now uh, in today's context um, uh, we are emphasizing uh, biodiversity uh, why biodiversity is important for us is that we do not know that how species can create a havoc like covid-19 or how a species may be a floral species can help us in getting some say medicine or maybe some food form or something uh, which is indispensable for our survival uh, this time is very important because it is being said that we are moving towards a next level of extinction of species and in days to come probably may, may we may lose 1 million uh, species and we are not aware that what impact 
the loss of a species uh, will make. Uh, Dr. Shah was mentioning very good example of uh, uh, bees. Uh, nowadays, across the globe, people are talking of conserving bees because 60 percent of our food is pollinated by bees and uh, uh, if the bees are not there it's not only the crop of apple as the photograph photograph was uh, um, uh, a photograph was shown by dr shah that a lady uh, is uh, pollinating the apple orchard by herself because uh, the orchard has lost bees. Uh, so it would be very, very difficult uh, for producing enough food grain for all human beings if we are going to lose pollinators, not only bees, but other insects also. Uh, you might not be knowing that 80% of uh, insects complete their life cycles in and around wetlands and we are losing wetlands. Uh, very with, with a very rapid speed. In the last uh, uh, couple of decades, we have lost huge chunk of wetlands uh, in, in most part of the world. So when the wetlands are getting lost, then the cycle of the life cycle of the insects won't be completed, including um, bees. And probably loss of insects may uh, in days to come uh, if impact the production of uh, food grains, which can uh, further in, uh, uh, affect the lives of the people. So basically, the whole concern of uh, saving biodiversity is that we do not know that how or what turn it will take. Uh, today, everyone is uh, witnessing that how uh, a virus which has been shaken out from a species because of uh, 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 unwanted intervention of the human being is causing um, a pandemic across the globe. Uh, very good example was given by Dr. Shah uh, of malaria. Basically, there are uh, thousands of uh, viruses, protozoans uh, are, uh, are, are uh, there in many, many wild species for millions of years. Uh, those uh, wild species are basically host of these microorganisms and they don't cause any problem to them. But uh, when, because of many anthropogenic activities like deforestation or when you kill them for bushmeat or for any other consumption, it is said, a word is used, that they are shaken out from the, uh, their, uh, their natural host and by mutating themselves, sometimes they cause diseases, what we call zoonotic diseases. So basically, when we are talking of saving forests, or saving wildlife, we are also talking of not to shake uh, those uh, microorganisms which are living in, the, in their host species for millions of years. Now, only because of uh, human activities or anthropogenic pressures, they are shaken out and uh, they may cause diseases. So uh, on one hand, if the nature and the floral and faunal component of the ecosystems can be beneficial for the human beings, they can also cause uh, a lot of diseases and problems for the, for, for the survival of the homo sapiens. So uh, that, this has to be appreciated and this has to be respected, I would say, that uh, uh, the, uh, because the homo sapiens means we uh, are a very, uh, very uh, arrogant species and uh, it doesn't uh, uh, easily appreciate the importance of uh, fellow creatures, especially the microorganisms. And there are many such species in and around our life. We even don't uh, pay any attention to them. Uh, I'm working in zoo and uh, 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 and have been working in uh, field also for the conservation of many species, including tigers. Uh, we have seen that the young generation is not uh, aware of the species um, around us, and uh, they are they are least concerned about the floral variations, the floral uh, beauty, or the floral 
um, activities or phenological activities, activities uh, around them. Uh, it would be very difficult for them to identify uh, trees. It, they, they hardly pay any attention whether the trees are flowering or fruiting or some bird, new bird has come because it's a migratory bird or it's a residential bird. And probably it would be difficult for them to name um, a dozen species of uh, trees or a dozen species of birds unless they have interest in birding or um, uh, nemophilistic uh, attention. So uh, somehow uh, this is the right time to educate youth about the uh, importance of uh, nature for our survival. And they should uh, also uh, be taught and the, 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 they should also be nurtured to appreciate the fellow flora and faunal creatures around us. And uh, uh, we should not think that we are a super species uh, because a micro, small microorganism, which is said to be the half microorganism, has shown uh, the strength of the homo sapiens across the globe. And we are struggling somehow to save our lives. So this is the this is very good time, and we, this this whole discussion and deliberation is very, very very relevant. And the whole con uh, context of the uh, discourse is very uh, very um, I would say relevant and timely that people, uh, especially the youth, uh, should be taught of uh, the importance of. Uh, being homo sapiens and the responsibility of being homo sapiens to give respect to the other uh, fellow species. Uh, we try to at least uh, educate youth uh, not to not telling the other organism as an animal, uh, rather uh, telling them that they are uh, their fellow creatures and that they have equal or maybe more importance and maybe they might have better faculties developed in, in certain areas which, which uh, we hardly uh, have or, or appreciate. So uh, today's, uh, today's time and today's program uh, on World Nature Conservation Day uh, is, is, is very, very relevant in COVID time, especially for youth to, to appreciate that whenever we talk of uh, nature conservation, it's not about conserving nation, nature, or rather it is um, more about conserving or protecting or saving ourselves. Thank you very much. Um, thanks a lot, sir. That was, uh, to, thanks a lot to both the guests who have uh, talked to us about this. And that was indeed a, uh, very interesting to listen to. And, uh, you know, we as students uh, don't really realize the importance of the environment uh, because we just study it as something which is part of our syllabus. But it is actually something which needs to be studied as a very integral part of how we are going to proceed as a society. And as Sir had mentioned, uh, you know, he talked about bees and about 60% of our food being pollinated by bees. So we need to tone down the arrogance as Homo sapiens, as Sir has, as uh, Dr. Hussain has pointed out, and uh, as uh, Dr. Ramesh has reiterated upon. So, good morning, everyone. My name is Arman Mathur, and uh, I will be moderating the question and answer session. Uh, just a little message to uh, the people who are watching on Facebook. You can post your questions in the comment section, and we'll try to get to as many of them as we can. And I know we as students have a lot of questions we want to ask. So, I think uh, we can start with the panelists only, and uh, I think I'll start with uh, Arya. Arya, do you have uh, a question you'd like to ask, sir, on basis of what uh, what has been talked about yet? Yeah, sure. I, ha I actually do have a question. Great. Go so, uh, like in the view of the pandemic, how do you think uh, that, how do you think this will affect the environment movements? For example, like, will the government once again uh, go back to focusing on economic recuperation or and will, will it put the climate and environmental movements on a back burner and, and like especially considering that it took us as a country such uh, such a long time to even recognize this threat
that is indeed a very interesting question arya so uh, i think uh, uh, any of the guests uh, who want to take up this question uh, they're the most welcome to do it because it is a very relevant question i think today that you know now that this pandemic has come in and uh, you know the main focus of governments is going to be mainly on how to revive the economy and the gdp and all those big mumbo jumbo jargon words but does that mean that the environment will be pushed to the periphery or to the sidelines is that something which is going to happen after this pandemic is that a legitimate fear you shall i speak yes sir go ahead uh, uh protecting environment or just reclaiming environment is a long term issue it is not that one go you can reclaim you can establish the environmental quality which already we have damaged and this economic pulse, the long for the huge population survival you require resources means at least food at least shelter immediate you need all these things and yes we learnt a lot during this pandemic of the covid 19 and it is not the outcome of one day it has taken years just to come to reach this stage certainly i will say that uh, yes it should not be pushed back the environmental this issues it should not be pushed back and many of the works are going on over there but it is the public also that they must understand now and they should contribute uh, and they should make even the uh, i would say uh, the agitations also can be done because it is a, it is time that public should uh, initiate all these things because somewhere it is going on government is doing ngos they are doing public they are doing or student community they are alert the entire whole world is alert nowadays so it is what that tactically you have to go for actions actions means you have to it is not only that on black and white should not publish reports or papers only yes it requires section of feed if you want the great land to be a restored ecosystem you have to restore that if you are talking about the wetlands to be revived yes it has to be revived so for these things you need human resource also technically so we have to produce human resource also in terms of practical way yeah yes uh, very interesting indeed sir has actually talked about the active role of the people in conserving the environment because it is not only the states which have to take a welfare as role but it is also the people who have to exhort the state and who have to uh, act in their daily life so that uh, you know the message goes to the world at large very interesting sir uh, dr ramesh would you like to add something to this am i audible yeah yeah you are audible uh, yeah. the, the the world economic forums uh, last meeting if you see the uh, the emphasis on the uh, on the subjects which are relevant for the uh, global uh, economic uh, stakeholders uh, you will find that first time among top uh, 10 risk which had been released by the world economic forum uh, three were related to uh, biodiversity and climate change uh, now uh, this is very important that when we talk of economy uh, or economic growth it it doesn't only uh, include the manufacturing uh, component of economy economy uh, has many uh, component which includes agriculture Uh, things related to food, uh, things related to services, and of course, things related to manufacturing. Now, across the globe, uh, the industrialist and capitalist and people who are uh, who who matters in, uh, uh, in in economic development have started realizing that unless the ecosystems are not Uh, saved unless the biodiversity is not uh, saved unless the flora and fauna diversity is not saved uh, the 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 uh, manufacturing of uh, many products which are based on uh, plants uh, are going to affect the economy as a whole 
because uh, if you see around, apart from electronic uh, gadgets, which is ESDM sector, or maybe white goods, or maybe some construction material, some of, uh, leaving apart some of them, most of the uh, consumables uh, are coming from uh, uh, agricultural um, fields. And uh, so now the industries and, uh, and and the and the 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 people who matter in economic policies and economic development across the globe have started realizing that uh, unless the biodiversity is not safe and climate change uh, uh, parameters are not taken into account or ecosystems are not safe it is ultimately going to impact the economic growth of the uh, countries. So perhaps we have reached to the uh, reached to the threshold. Earlier, it, these these deliberations were more of uh, theoretical in nature, and people were thinking that these are hypotheses. And uh, people who were in the field of economics, they were thinking, or this, at least this was perception that probably talking of uh, ecological stability or ecological balance is more of a uh, conceptual or theoretical uh, issues uh, because the world uh, uh, the voice of uh, people who are in the field of economics uh, or economic development uh, is uh, definitely louder than the people who talk of nature but uh, i have seen that in the last couple of months before uh, covid-19 it was a clear uh, uh, and uh, call, uh, kind of clarion call from the field of uh, economics, people from the field of economics, uh, that now the time has come to uh, take into, uh, I mean, things related to nature into consideration whenever we are talking of economic development. And they clearly un underline that the biodiversity loss is going to be a big threat for the for the economic growth across the globe. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That was. I think Arya, we've covered your question very well. Both our guests have uh, very comprehensively covered it. And uh, as Dr. Ramesh has said, that now there is a growing awareness, uh, and and there is this epiphany which is going around in uh, the stakeholders of uh, the economic side as well. So there is this realization which is coming out about and. Uh, as sir had said it is not a process it is not black or white it is not a process which ends in a day and uh, this will take some time but uh, we're moving in a positive direction so i think let's move on to our next panelist uh, mohisha do you have a question you'd like to ask sir on basis of uh, the discourse here uh, yes i have a question great so, go ahead yeah so as you said that by the year 2050 there will be many species that will become extinct. So is there something which we can do on our part to avoid this? Yeah, great question. Uh, any of the guests can uh, take this up? Very interesting yeah. question. Can I answer that? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Dr. Okay. Hussain. Okay. So uh, it is uh, the climate change that is witnessing uh, all these things and that is all a contiguous process uh, and it has taken place means continuing uh, with all anthropogenic other activities we are doing across so it is estimated and as yes, we cannot rewind it certainly but it is estimated and the process of restoration or reviving the degraded landscapes Suppose we talk about the flagship species of any animal. You take the example of polar bear. You take example of grizzly bear. Then you take example of uh, snow leopard. You take example of other umbrella or climate species. The programs are going on just to protect this because protecting these species means you are going to protect the biomes of the larger landscapes of the area. So it is that. Suppose it is project tiger. So you are not saving tiger out there. You are saying at the base level. 
the entire ecosystem you are going to save. So it is a huge task. It is a huge task that if you want to save a tiger, certainly you are not working with the tiger, but you are working at the base level of trophic level or ecosystem level. And that is a huge task for us to do up to go on. And uh, so if you take conspicuous mega species conserving, certainly you save the many species and we can listen the what uh, she has talked about or asked about the question the 25 percent or many species is extinct certainly we can curtail we can just lessen the extinction rate if you work at the base level means as uh, dr pande uh, has told about the wetlands the other ecosystem to save about them wetlands simply is a medium of life the water is a medium of life air is a medium of life so you have to see at all levels that you have to conserve all these things. So then you can listen only. So it is a very broad term. And it is just uh, at the very uh, this uh, statistical level we talk about all these things and it is uh, hypothesis we just say. But certainly we are witnessing the uh, uh, loss of a species every time, every decade we are losing somewhere it is critical or somewhere it is endangered, somewhere it is this concern becoming other category of the IOCN category. So these are all going on at this, after some time, it becomes extinct. So this is what uh, the statistical hypothesis, but certainly we can remind as uh, this kind of program we are witnessing and uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Pandey has told about the youth and the, the policy makers, the economic forum, they are now in a back foot and they are considering all these things. So we must be hopeful things will be revived and uh, we may not be, it can go to the negative level that we may not lose species. Right, right. Very interesting, sir. Anything uh, uh, anything you would like to add on, Dr. Ramesh? Uh, one, one, one thing I would like to say is that when we talk of uh, um, seizing the speed of extension of a species as has been asked, that what we can do for it. Uh, actually, when we deliberate on how to conserve a species, uh, especially the biodiversity, uh, one very uh, important sentence is said that the uh, solution is in nature itself. Yes. Uh, actually, this, this has to be understood and appreciated that we, as a human being, we think like that we can do something extraordinary for saving biodiversity species. The whole, uh, the, the whole, this question itself uh, tells that how do we think of other species? As if we are the super species and we can do something extraordinary. We are not the super species which we can do much. What we can, uh, what, what uh, where is the solution of these problems? The solution of these problems is in nature itself. So as Dr. Shah was mentioning, what is nature? Nature is basically <clears throat> congregation of different ecosystems. Like there are woodlands, there are grasslands, there are agricultural fields, there are wetlands, there are estuaries, there are mangroves, there are marine ecosystems, there are alpine ecosystems. There are forests. So basically, what as a human being we can do, we can assimilate ourselves more seamlessly to the nature. Nature will take its own course. So most of the solutions are lying with the nature itself. What we can do that we can think, of, think more positively, we can understand the ecosystem and ecosystem services in terms of in monetary terms, probably more uh, objectively, probably we have to appreciate more deeply that how nature is the only source which can take off, take, uh, take can take care of uh, depletion of the species or saving these species. Uh, so this has to be appreciated, and this has to be remembered that the, the that the the solution of these problems are with nature 
the, the, the solutions of these problems are not man-made. Uh, we can only uh, uh, we can only uh, uh, try. Uh, we can we, we should only try to 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 become part of the ecosystem more uh, more uh, intrinsically uh, rather than keeping ourselves out of the ecosystem and trying to uh, tweak or manipulate and think that we can we can we can bring bigger change in the ecosystem. Uh, uh, in other words, if we are saving the flaxseed species in the cave tiger reserves, we are saving uh, rivers also, we are saving waters also, we are saving other uh, species uh, up to the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, so, so, so this has to be uh, taken into um, account that solutions are in nature and we have to appreciate it. Very, very well said, sir. Uh, actually, we are, we are short of time. We would love to take more questions. Uh, but just to sum up, uh, sir has very wonderfully, both our chief guests have very wonderfully talked about, uh, uh, you know, that man has become very arrogant. And it is not up to man to save nature. It is actually up to nature to save man. And, you know, just to add a little tidbit of my own, uh, I'm a class 12 student and we are geography student. Arya is actually a classmate of mine. We're both humanity students. And we study about this Neo-Malthusian concept of geography in geography about development, uh, which is about maintaining a parity between population and resources. And I think that is something which we must go forward with. Uh, but we would love to take more questions. We are a bit short of time. So just to conclude, I would first like to uh, thank, uh, you know, I would like to express our utmost gratitude on behalf of the school to both of our guests for coming here, for enriching this session, for gracing this webinar really. Uh, with all of their knowledge and their inputs on biodiversity and ecological conservation. They've just been very insight, inf insightful, if not a very cathartic experience for all of us. And, uh, and of course, no word of thanks would be complete without thanking Principal Ma'am and our school uh, for providing us as students these opportunities to engage in these very interesting sessions. And these are sessions which give us all a lot of food for thought. And I'll be very honest, I, I, was a, I, studied, I studied geography in class 11. We studied about natural geography and I found it the most dreadfully boring thing. And uh, now that you know, I'm in these sessions, this is just so interesting to ponder upon and it, it goes really deep. Uh, and that is something we, you know, we start realizing, the stratification of all of it and how it is all interconnected. And last but not the least, I do have to thank the support staff and all the teachers who are managing the PPTs and who are managing the entire Zoom call because this wouldn't have been able to go as smoothly uh, as it has right now. And thank you to all the people who are watching on Facebook. Hopefully it has been a learning experience for all of you. And uh, we hope you have a wonderful day ahead. And I know I actually said good morning instead of good evening at 5 o'clock. Uh, when I introduce myself, uh, it is actually good evening. Good evening to all of you. Have a wonderful day ahead and we hope it has been an enriching experience for all of you as it has been for us. Thanks a lot.